Hello, let's together graph y equals sine x and a transformed version of that function. This transformed function has all of the bits. It has both reflections, both stretches and compressions, horizontal and vertical, and both shifts, left, right, and up, down. It's got it all, let's do it together. All right, step one, Graph your base function y equals sine x. Most teachers are going to want to see the base function so that they know that you know what you're dealing with. y equals sine x, you're probably going to have to memorize the x values that make the y values nice. The x values we like using for this base function are 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. If you haven't memorized the y values that correspond to those, you can use your calculator. Sin 0 equals, and your calculator will give you 0. Sin 90 equals, your calculator will give you 1, then 0, and negative 1, and 0 again. Now let's graph those together. We're going to start at 0, comma 0. 90, comma 1. Now 90 is halfway between 60 and 120, so I'm going to put it halfway between and one unit up, 180 comma zero, 270 comma negative one, and 360 comma one. What I am graphing here is called one cycle of the graph. This right here is one full cycle. I accidentally stopped at a half cycle to give you the air quotes. This is one cycle of the graph. If your teacher asks for two cycles, you're just gonna have to repeat the same thing, same size, same amount up and down a second time. You can also do it in reverse this way, go down, then back up, and back to zero. There's lots of ways you can do it, or you can just pick other random x's, like keep adding 90 or keep subtracting 90 for your x's and calculate your y's. Whatever, let's not overcomplicate it. Let's transform this function, shall we? Now, if your transformed function that's in front of you for homework doesn't have one of these bits, then skip that step, right? It means there's no effect. But I've got them all, so I gotta show you how to deal with all of them. Anything that's outside of the sin here, and the sin encompasses all the brackets, anything outside of that is a vertical change. A negative out front is a vertical flip or reflection, and a, a big number, as in bigger than one, in front means a vertical stretch. The effect of a vertical stretch on the y's is you multiply those y's by that number. In this case, I'm gonna multiply them by negative five. And then whatever the vertical shift is, this one's down three, you add or subtract that from the end. So I gotta take all my y's, I gotta multiply them by negative five for this, and I gotta subtract three for that. So. I'm gonna do that and then I'll get to the horizontal stuff. So let's just get through this. Zero times negative five is zero minus three. This becomes negative three. One times negative five is negative five. Minus three is negative eight. Zero becomes negative three. Negative one times negative five is positive five. Minus three is positive two. And this becomes negative three as well. So these y's become these new transformed y values. We're going to have to change the x's as well, and the x's are for horizontal changes. Anything in front of x is a horizontal reflection, or in this case, that's a horizontal stretch because it's a number less than one. You're gonna take that and you're going to divide your x's by whatever is in front of this x here. If this was a three, you'd divide by three. The division, as opposed to timesing, is what accounts for this fact that numbers less than one are actually horizontal stretches and numbers bigger than one are horizontal compressions. It feels a little backwards and that's why it ends up being division in this shortcut. And likewise, this minus 600 degrees for the phase shift or horizontal shift, you have to compensate for that by making it plus 600 in this formula. So let's do this. Zero divided by negative a half is still zero. And when you add 600 to that, this gives you 600. This is now my new x value and its corresponding new y value. I'm gonna plot 600 comma negative three in just a second after I've done some more calculations. 90 divided by negative a half on my calculator gives me negative 180 
plus 600 gives me positive 420 degrees. <laughs> 180 degrees divided by a half is 360 plus, oh, negative 360, plus 600 gives me 240 degrees. 270 divided by negative a half is negative 540. I'm doing this on my calculator. Add 600, I get positive 60 degrees. And 360 divided by negative a half is negative 720 plus 600 is negative 120 degrees. Now what you might notice is that these started at positive 600 and they were going down by 180 each time. That 180 is the stretched version of this difference of 90 that we had picked. Anyways, this is the way that it is. I'm gonna plot these points and we'll have our transform function right off the bat. 600 comma negative three. 600 comma negative three, check. 420 comma negative eight. 420 comma negative eight. 240 comma negative three. 240 comma negative three. 60 comma positive two. 60 positive two. And uh, negative 120 comma negative three. That's negative 120, negative three. All right, I've got my points. I'm gonna connect them from that first middle point to its maximum, back down to its middle, back to its minimum, and back to its middle. There we go. Now it doesn't actually look reflected here because we did a vertical reflection, which flipped us upside down, and a horizontal reflection, which flipped it this way. It ends up looking the same, although it is like upside down, right? Kind of like looking at yourself in two different mirrors, and then you look the right way around. Anyways, you'll note that it starts at positive 600 comma negative three. These are kind of like the coordinates of a vertex of a parabola if you're into vertex form. It's my starting point in the case of sine. And the amplitude is five. It goes five below the middle and five above the middle. The only other thing I like checking myself here is that the period looks about right. The period originally was 360. That's how wide it was, and we stretched it by two, so it should look doubly as wide, and oh yes it does. Gut check turns out, you know what that means, we're probably right. It's super easy to graph the transformed versions of sine and cos, if you have to start with that one. You simply multiply by whatever's in front of sine, and then add or subtract whatever's after the sine bracket for your y's, and your x's, you divide by whatever's in front of x, and then do the opposite sign of whatever is added or subtracted from x. It's not too hard, you just gotta have faith in the process. Best of luck.